Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be looking at the history of macOS. macOS first started with Server 1.0 in 1999, and we will go on a 21 year journey which ends with macOS 11 Big Sur in 2020. As mentioned, the first version of macOS is known as Server 1.0. Being a successor to Apple's Rhapsody OS, this was based on Next technologies such as the OpenStep API and using an XNU kernel. While retaining the Platinum theme from macOS 8, this OS was a preview of what would become macOS 10 two years later. Next in line for the foundation of macOS was the four developer previews. Developer Preview 1 introduced a column view in the Workspace Manager and introduced TextEdit. It was also the first non-server version of OS 10. It retained the OpenStep and OS 8 hybrid interface that was used in Server 1.0. Developer Preview 2 renamed the Workspace Manager to the Finder and focused on making the interface more like pure OS 8 or 9 without any of the obvious OpenStep elements. Developer Preview 3 was the first version of macOS to introduce the Aqua interface such as the traffic light colored window options, blue jelly bean like buttons, the Aqua Blue wallpaper and the iconic dock. With Developer Preview 4, the dock changed to a translucent form, dock magnification effects are enabled by default and it had various default applications such as Internet Explorer, Mail, System Preferences, and Sherlock. The final pre-release version of Mac OS X is the public beta version, which sold for $29.95 US dollars. More applications were placed into the dock by default, the dock apps appeared to be much more smoother, and while this build was visually similar to Developer Preview 4, it had an expiry date of May 14, 2001. After this date, the OS cannot be used, but of course, you can set the date back if you want to try the beta out yourself. macOS 10.0 was the official first version of macOS that was released to the general public. When you use the OS for the first time, you are greeted with an intro video that tells you welcome in several languages, then tells you we will be up and running in no time. When you look at the applications folder, we have various programs such as Chess, Stickies, and Sherlock. Internet Explorer surprisingly works with network access, but as mentioned before, it is very unstable. Although 10.0 was visually stunning, it had a rocky start with various performance and stability issues. Due to popular demand, the Apple logo was moved back to the top left and was usable again for key system shortcuts such as force quit, restarting, and powering off the device. A lot of the stability and performance issues ended up being fixed in version 10.1. With version 10.1 of macOS, codenamed Puma, it was distributed as a free update to those who already had version 10.0 installed. While the user interface barely changed, it was far more well received compared to 10.0, with applications such as iTunes and iMovie installed by default. iTunes was the central application that would be used to sync iPods and in later years, iPhones and iPads. Other features included easier CD and DVD burning, DVD playback support, image capture for importing images, and faster OpenGL drivers. It also had support for various third-party applications. The login screen now had a blue Apple logo and was far more user-friendly allowing people to click on a specific user instead of typing their name out. With the exception of Server 1.0, all the versions of macOS I've discussed so far have this boot up screen, which is a happy Mac with a spinning wheel on the top left of the screen. Released in 2002, the next generation of macOS is version 10.2, which officially had the public code name of Jaguar. What's different with this OS is that the default wallpaper has changed MPEG4 support has been added in QuickTime, which includes MP4 files, iTunes was revamped to version 3, and iChat was introduced as a way to communicate with other users online. The iconic Happy Mac symbol at startup is replaced with an Apple logo with a spinning wheel. In late 2003, Jaguar was succeeded by version 10.3 Panther, and aside the change in the default wallpaper, the Finder has been updated with a metal interface and a customizable sidebar where preferred folders can be either added or removed. The design of the three circle buttons on the top left of the window has slightly changed and will remain this way up to and including version 10.4 Tiger. Fast user switching was introduced, which allows for multiple users to remain logged on at the same time and quickly switch from one account to another. 
The use of Expose allows the user to easily switch between windows by viewing them all as thumbnails, and TextEdit now supports Microsoft Word documents. Other new features include FontBook, which users can use to manage their installed fonts, File Vault, which can encrypt a user's home folder for privacy, iChat with built-in audio and video conferencing, and Safari, which is Apple's self-developed web browser intended to replace Internet Explorer. There is also iCal, which can be used as a calendar program. In 2005, version 10.4 Tiger was released. Although it looked visually similar to Panther, this was the first version of macOS that was capable of running on both Intel Macs and PowerPC Macs. Features introduced in 10.4 Tiger include Spotlight, which is a fast searching program for documents and applications, a dashboard which can be used for your go-to widgets such as weather and time, improved 64-bit support, QuickTime 7 which now supports the H.264 codec, a dictionary application which is based on the new Oxford American Dictionary, and Quaz Composer, which is a development tool for processing or rendering graphical data. For Macs that possessed an iSight camera, Photo Booth was supported, with multiple photo themes. Tiger was also the final version of macOS to have an aqua theme, as version 10.5 Leopard will have a very significant visual redesign. macOS version 10.5 Leopard uses a space-style wallpaper and has revised major elements of the OS, including a redesigned dock which now has a 3D style and stacks, larger system icons, the introduction of Bootcamp allowing official dual booting of either Windows XP or Vista at the time, a redesigned Finder which looks similar to the style of iTunes 7, and supports various Express features such as Quick Look and Cover Flow. There was also Front Row which was used to resemble the Apple TV interface, Spaces which allows for multiple desktops on a single screen, and Time Machine, an automated utility that allows for users to restore files and folders from a backup source. The Apple taskbar on the top of the screen has changed to a translucent style and will remain in this style up to version 10.9 Mavericks. This version of macOS is the final one that can run on PowerPC Max, and the intro video played at first boot is absolutely stunning. When it comes to macOS, Leopard without a doubt was a very significant leap when it came to new features and a new visual design. macOS version 10.6 Snow Leopard was marketed as Apple for having zero new features for the end user. However, most of the software was extensively rewritten and the system had improved overall performance. QuickTime 10 was introduced where the entire window displays a video and the title bar and playback controls only appear if you need them. In later years, version 10.6.6 introduced the Mac App Store, which allowed users to easily download applications just like iOS. This was also the final version of macOS to support PowerPC applications using the Rosetta program. macOS version 10.7 Lion brought various elements from Apple's iOS to the Mac, such as the Launchpad application, which allows for easy access to launching apps in a springboard style. For newer Macs at the time, AirDrop was first introduced, where users can drop files from one computer into another if it also runs Lion without the need of a pre-existing wireless access point. FileVault 2 was introduced and it now uses full disk encryption, which extends the secure protection of your Mac, meaning you would have to log in before macOS can actually boot. FaceTime was also bundled with Lion, along with emojis. The use of Mission Control combines Expose, Dashboard and Spaces together, having them all localized in one big app. The login screen compared to Snow Leopard now uses a full screen style with a metallic background and circular user profiles. The introduction of iCloud allows users to sync various features with your iOS devices connected to your Apple ID, such as emails, contacts, calendars, and Find My Mac. Last but not least, Lion introduces a recovery mode which can be used for restoring or reinstalling the operating system. For Macs introduced from 2010 onwards, internet recovery can be used if there's no macOS or recovery on the built-in hard disk. OS X version 10.8, known as Mountain Lion, dropped the word Mac from the OS name, and it was a general refinement to Lion with the main focus on easier syncing with iCloud devices. New programs added include the Notification Center, similar to that of iOS, the Notes program, messages using the iMessage platform, and the Game Center for multiplayer games. Other updates include AirPlay mirroring to Apple TVs, 
and a minor dock redesign, particularly with the shape of the lights on open apps. OS X version 10.9 Mavericks was the first version of macOS to officially drop the use of large cat names and rather use locations in the state of California, with Mavericks being a surfing location. It is visually similar to Mountain Lion, however some of the new features include the finder having the use of multiple tabs, full screen support, and the use of coloured tags. Other new features include iBooks to read online books, Apple Maps being ported from iOS, and some system alerts being moved to the notification center. This version of macOS and every version onwards was a free upgrade for Mac users. Version 10.10 .10 Yosemite represented a huge change for Apple's macOS, with a complete design overhaul focusing on flat graphic design in the style of iOS 7. Here is the design change in programs such as Safari's UI, the Finder application, and the App Store. The default system font is now Helvetica New, and this OS has completely new icons for all default applications. There's also thinner fonts and the return of the 2D style dock, which was last used in 10.4 Tiger. A dark mode can be activated for the taskbar on the top of the screen and the dock. The boot screen has also changed, with the spinning wheel being replaced with a progress bar. On Macs that are made from 2012 onwards, the background is now black, with a white Apple logo and a white progress bar, which is still being used to this day. OS X version 10.11 Al Capitan was named after a rock formation in Yosemite National Park, and it was seen as an improved version of OS X Yosemite. The default system font has once again changed to San Francisco, which is Apple's custom typeface. It also contains iCloud Drive for those who want to put their device content onto the cloud for easy access between other Macs that you own. LCAP came equipped with a new security feature known as System Integrity Protection, which protects certain system processes, files, and folders from being modified or tampered with by other processes when executed by the root user. macOS version 10.12 Sierra is seen as a rebranding of the OS X name to simply be known as macOS. Named after the Sierra Nevada mountain range, it introduces features such as built-in Siri, just like iOS devices. For example, I can ask Siri about the current weather in the city I live in. I can also ask questions such as what date Apple was founded. There is also support for Night Shift, which reduces blue lighting on your Mac to aid a person to sleep. macOS High Sierra was considered a refinement of Sierra, with various performance improvements and technical updates rather than user features. However, one important change is that the default disk file system is now known as Apple File System, or APFS for short, replacing HFS Plus, also known as macOS Extended Journal. macOS version 10.14 Mojave is named after the Mojave Desert in California, which brings even more iOS apps to the desktop, such as Apple News, stocks for the investors and traders, and voice memos for those who want to record microphone audio. It was also the final macOS version to support 32-bit applications. In the system preferences, Mojave introduced a full dark mode theme for all of Apple's built-in applications. So it's not just the dock and top taskbar anymore that is affected by dark mode. macOS 10.15 Catalina is the final version of macOS 10 after two decades, and it was released to the public in October 2019 with a focus on system security. One example is in the system preferences Various applications can't get direct access to certain system features, such as full disk access or screen recording unless given explicit permission by the end user. Same with turning on location services. For Macs with a T2 chip, activation lock can be used to stop unauthorized Mac setups after an OS reset, by linking the firmware to your iCloud account. iTunes is completely replaced with different applications such as music, books, podcasts and TV while iOS device management now takes place in the Finder. Catalina runs in a read-only volume separate to user files to protect the actual OS from tampering. Because of the fact Catalina does not support 32-bit apps, this led to plenty of unanticipated backward compatibility issues. As the story of macOS 10 comes to a close, a new door opens to macOS 11 Big Sur. This version of macOS had another significant visual redesign since Yosemite, and it is the first version of macOS that runs on both x64 and ARM64 platforms, with the latter specifically for the Apple Silicon powered Macs. All system applications now have an iOS shaped redesign, while the interface itself has a new control center on the top right, 
and the dock appears to be floating. Widgets are added to the right hand side of the screen and for the first time in decades we have new Mac alert sounds. For all Macs that officially run Big Sur, a new startup chime was introduced into the fold. This is the old chime. And this is the new chime. So that was a detailed history of Apple's Mac OS. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you all in my next video.